Hey everyone and welcome back to r slash pro revenge and something a little different. So a while back we posted a post titled, Do You Know Who I Am? Backfires on Business Owner. It's one of our more popular posts and it's so entertaining and my wife and I as we're making this channel have been waiting with bated breath to see if another update would come out and sure enough, another update, update 10 has arrived. So if you already listened to that post, we're going to put a link to the timestamp of the new update in the description below. But if you haven't listened, give the whole thing a listen. It is expertly crafted, delicious revenge. So without further ado, here's Do You Know Who I Am? Backfires on the Business Owner with update number 10 at the end. Firstly, this didn't happen to me. I was with the person when they received a phone call about this issue. Then he explained it all to me. He's not on Reddit, so I'm sharing it. It's priceless. Names changed to protect identities. Listed buildings are important to the story. In the UK, there is a system for preserving ancient and important buildings. If a building has historical importance, it is known as a listed building. And the rules about how it's developed, maintained, improved are very strict. I need to be vague about the work involved, otherwise it's too easy to identify the parties involved. My friend, David, is skilled in a very niche area of construction. He repairs and renovates buildings using a very old construction method that hasn't been common for several centuries. All his work is on conservation projects and listed buildings. Work was required on a grade one listed property. The overall building work was being done by the main contractor, ACC Limited. One part of the work is very specialized. The contractor's managers didn't know anyone who did it, so the architect gave them a list of qualified people. The contractors chose my friend because he had the earliest availability. Five days into the work, the owner of ACC Limited, the main contractor company, arrived on site. He was throwing his weight around and being a noisy gobshite. David was just doing his job and ignored him. Noisy gobshite told one of his carpenters to get him a coffee. The carpenter disappeared. Noisy gobshite continued wandering and gobbing off about delays costing him a fortune. Fifteen minutes after the carpenter had disappeared, the noisy gobshite asked my friend a question. Noisy gobshite, where is that fucking chippy with my coffee? David, don't know. Noisy gobshite, go and find out. David, I'm only here for this job, pointing to the walls. I don't work for ACC Limited. Noisy gobshite, I don't give fuck whether you're an employee or a subcontractor, you'll still work for me. Now go and find my fucking coffee. David, Firstly, I don't appreciate being talked to like that, and secondly, my contract with you is to do these walls, nothing more. I'm definitely not a gopher. Noisy gobshite. Oh, you don't appreciate being talked to like that, do you? Which subcontractor do you work for? David. None. I'm self-employed. It's just me. Noisy gobshite. A fucking day laborer? And you've got the nerve to talk to me like that. Do you know who I am? David. Yep. Noisy gobshite. Well, you're fucking fired. Get off the fucking site now. David. Okay. Put it in writing. Noisy gobshite. Fuck off. Just get off the fucking site. David pulled his phone out and started recording. David, okay, I'll go. I just want proof you told me to go. Noisy gobshite, get off the site, you fucking idiot, you're fired. If you're still here in 10 fucking minutes, I'll have you fucking thrown out. David, cool, no problem. He picked up all his kit and walked away. As he was leaving, the contractor's site manager passed him, ironically, with a coffee for the boss. And with a smile said, Site manager, you're leaving early. Bloody part-timers. He's joking. David, no, your boss just fired me. Our contract is ended. Sorry, mate. Site manager, no, no, no. Let me sort this out. Wait, 
please, please wait. David left. The site manager was losing his shit because he knew something that noisy gobshite didn't. Only seven people in the UK are qualified to do the work. They all have a waiting list and David had been the only one available. By the time he was home, he had 12 missed calls. That was Thursday. Two working days missed so far. He said he'll go back, but only if he gets paid for the extra days and has a genuine apology in person from the boss. I met my friend when he was getting a call from the site manager saying the boss apologizes but is quote, out of the country, so can't apologize face to face. David also told me he phoned the other specialists to warn them, but they'd all been phoned on Friday begging them to do the job. They're all booked solid. David also phoned the architect to warn him. Situations like this, some unscrupulous contractors try to botch the job and fake the work. David is going to stick to his guns. Pay for all missed days plus face-to-face -face apology. He is sure he'll get it. I've said I'll pay anything to watch the face-to-face -face apology. Update. Site manager says he was told by noisy gobshite to threaten legal action if David doesn't finish the job. David reminded him he didn't leave and has proof he was fired. Site manager says noisy gobshite will apologize face to face on Friday. Can he start tomorrow? David said no. Following the threat of legal action, the conditions are different. Number one, face to face apology before work restarts. Number two, added pay for wasted days. Number three, payment of full contract value up front before work starts. Number four, all must happen by Thursday. That's the last day he can start and still expect to finish before his next booking. If he also works the weekends, he has just enough time. I asked him why he isn't charging a huge extra amount for the guy being such a wanker. He said it doesn't look good if you take advantage of companies when they're under time pressure. Not the done thing. It seems that one of my friends is an 18th century gentleman. Correction. I misunderstood David when he said only seven others do this work. He meant seven other businesses apart from his. They're small businesses, so he says it's probably about 20 people who can do it. Still a small number, but not as comically small as seven. Sorry for misleading you all about the number. Update 2. Unfortunately, it seems there will be no apology. David has discovered that the site manager was blamed for, quote, not making noisy gobshite aware of the situation beforehand and was fired. David contacted the operations director for ACC Limited, Noisy Gobshites number two, and informed them that an apology is no longer required as he will not be returning to the job. The ops director apologized for everything and offered to renegotiate the money, quote, very generously. David told him that he had only considered going back to the job as a personal favor to the original site manager. Since he isn't there, he feels no obligation to return. Ops director said he will get back to David, but didn't say why. I asked why he didn't say, give him his job back or I won't come back. David said, noisy gobshite is too petty and weak to be told what to do by a craftsman. It will have to be the company's idea for the site manager to come back. If I tell them to bring him back, it won't happen. David says the site manager is great at his job, but is only four years from retirement, so it's not easy to find a job at 61. I've decided I like David even more than I did three days ago. Update 3. It's 2 a.m. here. We've just got back from the pub. David got a call while we were out from the sacked site manager. David updated the architect on the situation this afternoon. The architect contacted the sacked site manager to tell him about a company who needs a site manager. The sacked site manager phoned David just before 9 p.m. I had to sit through the phone call only hearing one side. I must have looked childishly excited, like I got an ass full of sparrows. Then David filled me in. The site manager rang to thank him and to find out his favorite drink so he can send him a bottle. He hasn't got the new job yet, but he is seeing them on a Friday. Apparently, the architect's recommendation carries some weight, so he's optimistic. David refused at first. I didn't get you a job. The architect did. The site manager said, but you set all this shit in motion and told the architect that I'd been fired. Because of you, 
I never need to deal with that obnoxious pillock ever again. David wasn't specific about who the obnoxious pillock was. David said his drink is Cardu Gold Reserve. He said he will accept a bottle only if A, the site manager gets the new job, and B, if the site manager will come over and drink the Cardu with David. It looks like the handsome scribe who did the enormously difficult, time-consuming job of skillfully writing this saga down on Reddit isn't included in the whiskey consumption. As David poetically put it, PISS OFF KNOBHEAD YOU CAN BUY YOUR OWN FUCKING DRINK! All good news, hopefully, except that nobody gets to see that tosspot noisy gobshite eat shit when he has to apologize. I was so looking forward to that. Additional information. David and the fired site manager know each other outside of work. Each are members of charity organizations in the same town. Two different groups, but they work together a lot. Site manager is in Rotary Club, and David is in Round Table. I don't think he's a knight, but you never know. Update 4. Operations director for ACC Limited phoned David to suggest that they take the site manager back and generously renegotiate the money. David says they've missed the boat. There is no way he can finish the job on his own before he starts his next job. There is an absolute minimum of 11 days work left if everything goes without a hitch. David's next job starts 4th November. Only 10 days left if he works both weekends. Too late. I wish I could be a fly on the wall when noisy gobshite is told. The most common question. Many are asking what David does. If I said what it was, it's so identifying that I might as well give you his real name and his address. Sorry. The reason there are very few of them is it takes five years to become just competent and at least nine years to be a master craftsman. The jobs need at least one master present when the work is done. Update 5. Bad news. The fired site manager didn't get the other job. He met the new company, but they are not taking him on. The reasons aren't clear. David is meeting him on Sunday to discuss it. I can tell David feels like shit about it, even though it's not his fault. Site manager said if he's going to take action for unfair dismissal. I thought this was going to be win-win-win, but I suppose life isn't like that. Update 6. News about the sacked site manager. The situation isn't as bad as we first thought. I think we misunderstood what happened on Friday. David talked to him yesterday. The company he saw on Friday are not employing him in the normal way, that part was correct. But they have offered him a fixed term contract for 18 months on a distribution center build. It's not perfect, but on the bright side, it's slightly better paid than ACC. It's only 18 months, but that's better than nothing. There is also the chance that the new company might extend the contract if another project comes in. Update 7. 7? Seriously? David has heard that they're getting a Bulgarian to come over to do the job. David was grinning when he told me. He thinks he knows what will happen. There is a similar but different technique that was used on some 19th century buildings in Sofia. David thinks that the guy will use that technique. It looks similar, but two very important materials are different. David has decided to wait. He plans to let the Bulgarian finish the job and get paid. Then, David is going to suggest to the planning department and the client that they check the two components. Unless the Bulgarian knows the 17th century English method, he will have used the wrong materials. It would mean ripping it out and starting again. They are incredibly strict with this type of work. I shouldn't want this so much, but I really hope this happens. I'm a petty man. Further information. Many people are asking, when will David know if the Bulgarian has done the job right? David might know fairly soon, since there are very few suppliers of one of the materials. If the Bulgarian contacts them, David will be told. David's words, It's a tiny incestuous part of the industry, and they gossip like old women. Correction, we all gossip like old women. If the Bulgarian doesn't go there, David is leaving it alone until he is told that the work is finished and the Bulgarian is paid. He doesn't want to put the guy's money at risk. In David's words, I don't want the Bulgarian to drag his ass over here and go home empty-handed just because I can't wait to drop silly bollocks in the shit. The man's got a living to earn. I'll wait. Just in case of confusion, silly bollocks is the same person as noisy gobshite. 
It should take the Bulgarian about three weeks to finish the job unless he works weekends. David knows plenty of people on site and a few at ACC head office, so he'll know when the job is finished. So I've got to sit on my hands for three to four weeks and pretend I'm not an excited seven-year-old girl pissing her pants about Christmas coming. Update 8. David has been told that the Bulgarian got straight to it and started work. He's had materials delivered, but from an ordinary building supplier. The stuff he needs to do the job properly is too bulky for him to bring with him, even if they sell it in Bulgaria. He hasn't ordered it from the UK supplier. There are three, but only one has enough for this job because they got it in for David. So, unless it is coming by road and ferry, he is not using the right materials. David wouldn't allow it to go unreported even if he wasn't annoyed about noisy gobshite. He's got a genuine passion for looking after all these buildings he works on, and he is a purist when it comes to historical accuracy. So now I have to hold my water for three or four weeks. David says that if he's using more modern materials, he might finish sooner. Three weeks is the time it takes if you stay in the 17th century. I've turned into a bit of a weirdo about this job. When I phoned David earlier on a pretext, he realized I was after info again. David, fuck me, do you want to fit a body cam so you can see and hear everything as it happens? Me, if it's not too much trouble and you can link me into your phone calls, that'd be nice. David, after laughing, you fucking knob cheese. Is it okay if I cover the lens when I'm shitting and shagging my wife? Me, personally, I don't do those two things at the same time, but whatever floats your boat. David, you're telling me you do them separately? When are you shagging my wife? Me, right after she's cleaned all the shit off the sheets from doing you. Some of us are fussy. David, piss off, you're an uptight clean freak. Hangs up. No goodbye, no see you soon. English manners aren't what they used to be. I know it doesn't look like it, but honestly, I, I do have a life. I promise. Update 9 will probably be a few weeks. Hey everyone, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge, the subreddit where people find ways to get expert revenge on those who have wronged them. Today's post, do you know who I am? Backfires on a business owner. Firstly, this didn't happen to me. I was with the person when they received a phone call about this issue. Then he explained it all to me. He's not on Reddit, so I'm sharing it. It's priceless. Names changed to protect identities. Listed buildings are important to the story. In the UK, there is a system for preserving ancient and important buildings. If a building has historical importance, it is known as a listed building, and the rules about how it's developed, maintained, improved are very strict. I need to be vague about the work involved, otherwise it's too easy to identify the parties involved. My friend, David, is skilled in a very niche area of construction. He repairs and renovates buildings using a very old construction method that hasn't been common for several centuries. All his work is on conservation projects and listed buildings. Work was required on a grade one listed property. The overall building work was being done by the main contractor, ACC Limited. One part of the work is very specialized. The contractor's managers didn't know anyone who did it, so the architect gave them a list of qualified people. The contractors chose my friend because he had the earliest availability. Five days into the work, the owner of ACC Limited, the main contractor company, arrived on site. He was throwing his weight around and being a noisy gobshite. David was just doing his job and ignored him. Noisy gobshite told one of his carpenters to get him a coffee. The carpenter disappeared. Noisy gobshite continued wandering and gobbing off about delays costing him a fortune. Fifteen minutes after the carpenter had disappeared, the noisy gobshite asked my friend a question. Noisy gobshite, where is that fucking chippy with my coffee? David, don't know. Noisy gobshite, go and find out. David, I'm only here for this job, pointing to the walls. I don't work for ACC Limited. Noisy gobshite, I don't give fuck whether you're an employee or a subcontractor, you'll still work for me. Now go and find my fucking coffee. David, 
Firstly, I don't appreciate being... The contractor has destroyed part of the building. There was an internal feature that didn't look particularly important, but is part of the roof structure. They removed it and put in a much better modern support, but they are not allowed to. Neither the project manager or the new site manager or staff knew the importance. Guess who ordered it to be replaced? Cheap, quick option. Instead of repaired, the slow, expensive option. Of course, it was noisy gobshite. It's a criminal offense to destroy anything on this type of property. Jail time type of crime. Even if they don't go to jail, it's a massive fine. So now everybody in that company is pointing fingers at each other and claiming no responsibility. Noisy Gobshite has claimed that he did not give the order to take out the internal parts of the roof structure. The project manager has email evidence he did. On Tuesday 19th, the client ordered all of the contractor's staff off the site. They're having everything examined. It's almost certain they're firing the contractor. They've issued instructions for bids from new contractors. They'll also sue the contractor for the cost of repairing and replacing everything they've done wrong. The architect's estimate was 800,000 euros. The local authority planning department wrote to the contractor outlining what they've done wrong and advising them of their plans to inspect and the possibility of prosecution. According to the staff, noisy gobshite disappeared to the lawyers on the day the letter arrived. David had three different people from ACC phone him within an hour when the news of the letter circulated around the staff. So now we're waiting for a few things. Number one, the client's inspection. If that confirms that ACC have damaged the site, then the client has the right to fire the contractor. ACC doesn't get paid and they have a massive repair bill. Number two, local in authority inspection by conservation experts. If they've destroyed features in the property, the local authority will prosecute ACC as a company and the person who ordered it. David is very unhappy because the internal structure that has been destroyed can't be replaced. In his words, that wood has been sitting there doing its job for 400 years until that fucking jizz stain comes into the picture. Then it's gone and that's it, never again. He seems genuinely sad. I'm betting that noisy gobshite is wishing he'd got his own coffee on that day last month. Correction and apology. The letter to ACC, not their real name, did not threaten to prosecute. It only made them aware of the planning department's intention to send a specialist to inspect the building and in particular, the area affected by the change. Apparently, prosecution, if it happens, takes forever. My sincere apologies for misleading you all. Like everyone else, I was too keen to pick up my pitchfork and believe the worst. A combination of wishful thinking and Chinese whispers meant that by the time the story got to David, it was much more serious and advanced. Noisy gobshite might actually be prosecuted, but if it happens, it's more likely to be six months than six days. My fault, not David's. David warned me. Everything that goes in your ears doesn't have to spill straight out of your mouth. You're too keen to feed the masses. They might think you're farting rainbows right now, but that won't last if you make a bollocks of the info. He's right, as usual. As fucking usual. So annoyingly fucking usual. Requested information. A few people have asked what happened to the original site manager who was fired, but I couldn't answer until tonight. We, me, David, site manager, and two others met in the pub. He definitely has the new job, subject to fidelity insurance checks, which he'll pass. He starts on February 9th. He got paid off in lieu of notice by ACC. It's standard practice for firing. His contract gave three months notice and he was owed 12 holiday or vacation days, so they paid him just over three and a half months pay in one lump. He also gets to keep the car until March. He said, when he fired me, I was shaking like a shitting dog, but the wife reminded me that I could take my pension early and how much I hate that company and especially hate that dodgy pillock. Then the architect called me about the distribution center job and I stopped worrying. He has got Christmas off and he is starting the new job on a slightly higher salary. 
The only downside is that the job is only guaranteed for 18 months. There is the strong possibility that the company will keep him after that if they have work. It's just not definite. Initially, he was planning to take noisy gobshite to an industrial tribunal for unfair dismissal. Now he can't, because he isn't going to suffer financially. He said, obviously I'm glad I'm not losing money, but I was looking forward to beating that wasak in court. Right now, he is using the extra time to build a better sleigh and some reindeer. Yep, a sleigh. It's to go on the back of a truck. His group walk around the area dressed as elves and snowmen with Father Christmas on the sleigh, playing Christmas carols at window-rattling volume, collecting donations for a charity. I've been roped into it many times. He brought David the whiskey he promised. David said he shouldn't, but site manager said Yorkshiremen keep their word, even to a shower of soft, shandy-sipping southerners like you lot. Besides, I'm not risking breaking this lucky streak. Even the whiskey was half price. Both me and David pointed at him simultaneously and said, A real Yorkshireman! For the unaware, Yorkshire folk have a reputation for two things. Very straight talking and being careful with their money. So after bollocking him for suggesting that I was a southerner, we left the pub and went to site manager's garage so we could drink the whiskey and admire his work on the sleigh. If I tell you all how good Cardu Gold Reserve tastes, will they send me some freebies? Note, I'm Welsh, born near Cairnarfon. And here's some Welsh stuff that you can read if you go to uh, the video on our YouTube. I'm not going to attempt these words. <laughs> but that's why you've probably noticed some poor grammar. I'm waffling now because I'm full of whiskey. It's 1 a.m., so it's past my bedtime. Bye for now. Update 10. I think there might be some karmic justice on its way. Noisy gobshite! Has been interviewed under caution. It doesn't mean they're definitely taking legal action against him, but it means they are preparing for the possibility. They also did the same with the project manager, and they're going to do it with the fired site manager next week. The site manager is confident he has nothing to worry about. The decision to remove the roof support sections was made after he was fired. He said he was confident that if he'd been there at the time of the illegal alteration, the noisy gobshite would have tried to pass responsibility. Or as site manager put it, that cowardly slope-shouldered turd would have shat all over me to save his own skin. Can turds shit? Luckily, the project manager has proof in the form of an email that Noisy Gobshite ordered the work. Noisy Gobshite tried to persuade slash bribe him not to pass it on to the people investigating this for the local authority planning department. When that didn't work, he tried to threaten him. That backfired because not only did project manager ignore the threats, but he told the investigators that Noisy Gobshite told him to quote, lose the email. I have a lawyer friend who tells me that interfering with a witness and destruction of evidence are offenses in themselves. Noisy gobshite won't stop digging himself a deeper hole. I am going to be so disappointed if he gets away without legal consequences. He is definitely suffering though. The big news of the week. Noisy gobshite has been fired. David announced it yesterday, Saturday after he was told by no less than four different employees of ACC. He said they couldn't wait to tell him. Then the conversation went like this. Me, how is that fucking possible? How does the owner get fired? Did he walk up to a mirror and say, you're as much use as Anne Frank's drum kit, you're fired. David, nope. You know he inherited the business from his dad and uncle? Me, yep. David, you know his brother and cousin own a slice each? Me, yep. David, well, their combined share is over 50%, so they fired him. According to Luis, the accountant's manager, they are pissing their pants. They were happy to leave noisy gobshite in charge as long as the money rolled in, but now their golden goose looks very sick. They're terrified that losing this contract and the penalties and fines will finish the business. So, 
They're appealing to the client slash property owner to take ACC back to finish the contract. Part of that involves convincing the building owner that noisy gobshite will never have anything to do with the company. Obviously, they're throwing noisy gobshite under the bus. Luis said there was screaming and threats of violence from noisy gobshite when they fired him. He had to be escorted off the premises. He's been phoning employees, asking questions, and seems surprised when people don't want to help him. According to Luis, he actually thinks the employees like him and want to be loyal to him. She said the man is in cloud cuckoo land. Me. He's going to be so pissed off. I wish I could see that numpty's face as it was happening. David, it's nothing that scrote doesn't deserve. There is something else, but I can't tell you because I promised the person who told me that I wouldn't tell anyone yet. Me. You fucking tease. How important is it? David. It's huge. Life-changing for the subject. I wish I could tell you because it nearly gave me a hard-on. Me. Fucking hell. It must be big if it can get that ugly appendage to do anything except hang there like the last chicken in the shop. Your wife must have been pleased. David. What a drama. She thinks I should tell her this thing I was told in confidence. She thinks I should be able to tell her everything because we're married. I explained it's not my secret to share. I was hoping I'd get, I appreciate you have integrity, dear husband. But no, I've got an angry missus who thinks I'm a knobhead. Luis and her job title have been changed to protect the innocent. It seems like it will be a couple of months before he can give me this awesome news, so I don't want any of you holding your breath. The client slash building owner has done their inspection. Two areas are unacceptable, as expected. The damaged area and the part that David should have done, but was done by Stefan. They are very unhappy. When listed buildings are damaged, the local authority normally assumes it's the owner taking shortcuts. But in this case, the owner is a crusty old institution dedicated to preserving important buildings. They're not used to being accused of anything shady, so they did not like having to prove they had nothing to do with the damage to the building. David said, It looks like they've written off ACC because they've issued a type of request for tenders to several other contractors who specialize in conservation. He then spilled a lot of jargon I neither understood or remembered. Me. In simple English, they have asked a few companies to quote a price for the job. David. That's a very simplistic way of describing it, but I don't have the time or the crayons to explain it to you, so okay, let's say they're asking for prices for the job. Condescending twat! So, I was hoping this story would build up to a crescendo with noisy gobshite suffering something horrible, but it's just sort of fizzled out with a whimper while we wait to see what legal action is going to be taken. Real life is inconveniently slow. So that's it for the post, guys. Wow, this story just stays true to itself and remains my favorite revenge story of all time. It's been that way since we recorded it last. It's that way with this newest update. And we'll be keeping an eye on this post as much as we can to see if a new update comes out down the line and we can get another video, another recording out for you guys for that one as well. I hope you enjoyed the post. As always, if you did, Please leave your reactions or your stories in the comments below. We'd love to hear them. And if you'd like to see more and hear more stories from r slash pro revenge and other subreddits when they come out on the channel, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and for listening.